talking about what makes you successful in life, relationships, and business. It's Jump, Pivot, and Roll with Shannon Stiles and Rachel Murphy. So, you've been living your life for others, and you recognize that there's a reason that when you're flying, the stewardess announces, should the cabin experience sudden pressure loss, stay calm, and listen for instructions from the cabin crew. Oxygen masks will drop down from above your seat. If you're traveling with children, make sure that your own mask is on first before helping your children. But now what? Well, we believe self-love starts with putting things in order. During this episode, we will share with you what that looks like, so you don't want to miss a a moment of it. Welcome to Jump, Pivot, and Roll. I'm Shannon Stiles. And I'm Rachel Murphy. Rachel? Yeah. Self-love. Yeah. Starts with putting things in order. What does that mean to you? Putting things in order means that I know what my priorities are. I know where I'm headed. I know what my intention is for my day and my week and my life in general, and that I am aware of the things that I need to say yes to and aware of the things I need to say no to so that I can do and complete what my life mission is. You make a lot of great points there. That's actually one of mine also. Is it? Yeah, because I I said it a little differently. It's prioritizing my desires. Yeah. Meaning I have to know what do I love? Um, What makes me happy? How much time am I spending on those things? Um, The things that make me happy. I have to acknowledge what I'm doing that doesn't make me happy. Absolutely. And really bring that together and, and, and figure out a game plan, like you said. Right. I mean, I, you know, no team goes to the game and wins the championship without having a game plan. You're right. Uh, hopefully they don't even practice. get on the field without having a game plan and practice. And the great thing about practice is it shows us what works and what doesn't. And so as we learn those things, our priorities get clear, I believe. Yeah, and so a part of putting things in order is realizing what doesn't work. Absolutely. And you also made a very a very good point of saying uh, to recognize what to say yes and no to. And no is probably the most important thing that you can learn to say. And I think that's the reason why little two-year-olds learn that word so fast. You know, we don't like it then, but it's so important that we learn that no is okay as well. So what you're saying, Rachel, is that we're conditioned as babies, as little toddlers, probably even before toddlers, not to stand up for what we believe not to say no right. not to not to have our own opinion right we're guilted we're guilted into if we say no if i get the call and i don't get this call anymore but when my kids were in school to say hey we need you to be on this committee or we need you to do that and if i don't have my priorities in order and know my value, I'm going to say yes out of guilt. Now, I may absolutely love it and want to say yes, and I'm going to do a great job. But if I take on something else that's going to take away from something else just because of that phone call and that guilt of, what will people think of me? Oh, my goodness, I'm not being a team player. I think that's where that ugly guilt, which we talked about in Mm -hmm. our last episode, steps in and so that is why it is so important we put that mask on ourselves first it's yeah. not selfish it's selfless and it's it's caring about you so that you can care about others well in all honesty once you practice this and once you once you make this um, a part of your process and of your daily routine what happens is you're able to accomplish so much more 
so that it fun. frees you up to be able to do extra things. Absolutely. And you're doing it with a happy heart. You're doing it in gratitude. You're doing it with gusto. You're you're enjoying it. And so when you come to that meeting, you're not grumbling at everything everybody says because, oh, my God, I can't be here. I've got this to do and that to do. You're grateful for that opportunity and you're giving your best. And if we if we I love to use the picture, right, you, you've heard this a mm-hmm. hundred times. If we don't fill our picture, how do we fill anybody else's glass? We right. can't. We absolutely cannot but if we keep adding to that pitcher we keep adding water we have more and more and more to give and we do it lovingly not grudgingly yeah so another way that I do this um that I prioritize the things that I love is and and sometimes there are things that I don't love in there just because they're things that I have to do in order to get to the next level or uh, we all have that or quite honestly things that I have not progressed enough that I don't have enough money to hire out. And I say that and you're laughing but I'm I'm dead serious. I, I know you are. That's why I'm laughing I will I get know. to a point where I mean I do not enjoy I'm not a good chef, right? I love to cook. I'm not a good chef. I'm not good with the seasonings and all of that. So I've gotten to a position where I can now afford to hire and to have someone else do the prepping for me. And I cook it, right? Mm -hmm. But those are things that we, we work towards. Right. I don't like house cleaning. Actually, that's not true. When I'm really, really upset or when I need to think deeply I love to clean my house and I don't mind cleaning at those times because I know I'm going to get something besides a clean house out of it. But I also look at the big picture and I see that those other items that I that are really, really important to me are not getting done when I'm wasting my time cleaning my house. And there's somebody out there that is they're much better at it than I am. And I could be helping their family. So that's one way I look at it, but but my big takeaway is the easiest way I use in prioritizing those things that I need, I must do, is I give them a cool role. I love this. And so one is, here's an example. Um, So for the insurance agency, I own an insurance agency, and my mission is to educate and protect my community. So I actually went out and got capes and kind of little Wonder Woman out. Wonder Woman. She didn't just do capes, guys. She has it all: the bands, the oh yeah, bands, bands, headbands. When I do something, I go all in. You're right, but it's really exciting. I used to, I used to dread going to trade shows because I just, I felt like, oh my gosh, I'm not that good at it. I'm, you know, I I haven't been in sales that long. I mean, all that negative self-talk that we talk about. However, I then changed that to, it's my time to step into that costume, right? To play that role. And we call ourselves ICT Wonder Women. Um, Right now, we'll have to change that when we hire a man, but right now we only have three women so we can get away with that. But ICT is our our city airport code for Wichita. And we jump into that role. We, we take that role seriously of educating and protecting our community. So we made it fun. Mm-hmm. And that's the way we made it fun. So anytime I have to go out and I have to go networking, I step into the role. Now, as far as, let's say, my husband... I have a role of being the most amazing June Cleaver with the 2020 spin on it. And I'm, you know, I'm fun and I bring energy to our relationship. And whenever we go to date night, that's the role I step into. I want to be the fun, energetic one that that just really, really makes that relationship great. And my husband does the same. And when we get together, we just mold so well. And I look forward to stepping into that role. And 
one thing I really want to point out is, you know, I might have six or seven like very I, successful living the radio show. It's I play a role of going out to my community and helping them overcome adversity. Jump, pivot, and roll. We play a role of helping our community and helping not even our community, helping this world to view things in a different light. When you're when you're in a position where you have to overcome something, we want you to be able to jump, pivot, and roll. We want you to be able to go around that problem, right? And we want to give you the tools necessary. So these are all different roles that I play in my life. And when I do this, Rachel, what happens is when I step into, just like just like Superman used to do, when he steps into that telephone booth and he changes there's no Clark Kent anymore he is Superman and he is going to save the world he's going to do what he is put out to do right so that means maybe when I'm in the role of ICT Wonder Woman my phone's turned off to my family unless it's absolute emergency right but that's how you prioritize is making it a priority so what you're saying, uh, a great tool mm-hmm. is to kind of figure out the roles that you want and need because we can't just do what we want. We also have to do what we need. Right. And one of those roles is networking. And I don't like it. It's not something I love, but I made it something I love by creating a role. And by doing that, I do have to say you got so much better at it because yeah. people would not know how much you really did not enjoy doing that because you enjoy it now you enjoy it a lot more right but what we're saying to our listeners is create those roles and then figure out a fun name or a fun identity that that you uh, connect with to step into those because that listen oh, if you've got a little bit of romance lacking in your in your love life Call yourself the sexy kitten, right? I don't care what it is. Come up with something fun that puts you in the mood to do that, right? Right. And if you got to purr in your husband or your fiance or your boyfriend's ear a little bit, then purr. (laughs) Exactly, because what you're doing and what we're trying to point out is you're being intentional with your life. And that, to me, is what self-care is about. I think it gets such a bad rap the world self-care it's like oh it does because people it's a guilt thing we go back to guilt right and that's what this whole segment is about is is guilt no more right it's a guilt thing it is people want to make you feel guilty because you're taking care of themselves and here is what i believe and i might be wrong but this is the reason i believe people do that why is that they're not taking care of themselves Well, yeah. And, you know, a really good example um, is that I learned one of my personal experiences is I was one day standing in the mirror like we as women all do. And I was berating something about myself that I did not like physically. We don't do that. No, no way. And my daughter coached how not to do that last week. Standing behind me. And she got really mad. It was Ari. Uh-huh. And you know how Ari is. Yes. When Very Ari, opinionated. Oh. I love her. Yeah. She's my little mini me. Um, but she's like, you know, you need to quit that. And it kind of shocked me. And she goes, do you realize that the way you talk to yourself is you teaching us how to talk to ourselves? Bam. Like I was hit. Standing square, ovation. Right in the nose with those words. And it's like. But that is what happens. The way that we talk to ourselves and the things that we don't do for ourselves teaches those who are watching us how to not do that and how to see self-care as selfish. So the lesson in this is you are always on stage. Oh, absolutely. When you think no one's looking, there's more eyes watching than you can imagine. But, you know... The other important thing is, is yes, it is important to remember that others are watching you, 
But I think it's also important to remember that you count. You matter. Your health, you know what? Take care of it now or pay for it later because you're going to pay a price. There is nothing you're going to do that's going to be free. You're right. No choice. There's a cost to it all. To everything. So you you brought me into the next one that I believe is important. And, okay. And that's to practice accept, acceptance. And yes. what I mean is accepting the situation as it is. Maybe it's not what you want it to be, but that's okay. Accept where you're at. Love where you're at. Stop and look back at where you were, right? And acknowledge the progress you've made. But a key to practicing acceptance is, You've got to see things as they are, not worse than. Right. And Absolutely. once you do that, you know, I'll I'll go back to, I don't know if I shared this last time or not, but if I did, that's okay. Listen to it because you probably haven't caught on and taken my advice yet. <laughs> but so last week was it, we were out shopping maybe uh-huh. two weeks ago. I've had some medical, medical problems um, and I've used that as an excuse, right? Uh, now. It did have something to do with me gaining weight. There was a lot of truth to it, but I was so focused on the weight that I had gained that I, I wasn't seeing things as they really were. I was seeing them worse than they were. Much worse. Yeah. So Rachel and I go out and we're going shopping and you know, you know, ladies, how you get when, when you're shopping and nothing, nothing, you can find the best outfit in the world. And if you're in that mode that you don't like the way that you look or or you're feeling a little insecure, nothing is going to look good, right? Well, that is where I was. And Rachel and I were out and we're out shopping for some clothes because unfortunately I, I outgrew all my clothes. And Rachel looks at me and she says, well, you tell him. What did you say to me? Well, I made you look at the two of us in our our nakedness or mostly nakedness Mm -hmm. and I made you look at me and I made you look at you and we turned around every single angle and I made you look and say okay what do you really see you show me the differences in what's going on now there is some slight Because something medical did happen, but it was eye opening for you. Oh yeah, because and and we did do. I'm I'm gonna share it. You're you're gonna (laughs) tell about the. the I'm gonna tell it. it. Okay. So and I'm sure Rachel doesn't want me to say this because she doesn't want us to judge it. But you know what? We're talking about seeing things as they are and not worse than. And there are some ladies out there that need to see things as they are, right? Not worse than they are. But see it as they are so that they can change it. So we're walking through uh, the shops and Rachel says, do me a favor. When you find someone that you look look like, tell me. And I didn't know where she was going with it. And I see this lady and I said, she was talking physically. And I said, right there. And she goes, no. Okay. So I tried again. She goes, no. I mean, I tried several times. And then she would point out, ladies, that, you know, your body really, types really were nice, the same. But it was, it was the same body type as I am. And I would be, no way, no way. And that's because that's where my mind was, right? And you even shared, a, there was a um, research done, there right. was a study done. Right. Share that. So um, I don't remember if you guys remember the BCC show, but it was basically about um, they would take women and they would do a makeover on them. And I think it was don't be afraid to be naked or something. I can't remember. Anyways, at the end of it, they would put them on Times Square, huge in this beautiful boudoir shoot. But what they would do is they would take all these Beautiful women, because women are beautiful of no any matter which size. shape or size. Yeah, but we all have where we want to be, and that's okay too. But they would take these women and they put them all in black panties and black bras, and 
they were lined up in all the different sizes and they would say to the lady, okay, put yourself where you belong. And every single time she was wrong, she was far, far off. I mean, not just a little off, she was far off. And so it was all of a sudden, it allowed her to look at where she actually was. But, you know, I want to also say with self-acceptance, because that's important. And guys, honestly, size does not matter unless it matters to you personally. There are gorgeous, beautiful yes. women like Megan Trainer. Oh, my gosh. Girl crush. I love her <laughs> confidence, her words, her beauty about her body. She loves herself. And I am so in love with her because of that. Yeah. And, you know, we want you to celebrate where you are. When I am teaching women how to clean out their closets, because we all hang on to things, because we think, oh, I'm going to get there someday. I really encourage them to let go of that someday and celebrate where they are. And if they go down, great. Go do some shopping, even if it's at Goodwill. I love Goodwill. Go do some shopping if you go down and go do some shopping if you go up. But love yourself because you're not just that physical person. And that's what upset me so much about what Shannon was doing to herself is she was letting her physical affect her mental and her emotional and yeah. her spiritual. And that's the reason why I did that experiment. And with I'll her. tell you what, it's it's why seeing things as they are not worse than they are is so important because as soon as I saw myself for what it actually was, I saw the progress. Right. And I was able to, uh, now, I think I've lost three pounds since we had that discussion, right? Because now I'm not focused on, on the negative, I'm, fo I'm focused on the positive. And that's why it's so important to see it not worse than. Right. I, I can't hammer that home enough. Well, it allows healing. You were so stuck and you needed to be able to love yourself where you were at so that your body could actually heal. Exactly. So with that, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Jump, Pivot, and Roll. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. And you don't want to go anywhere because we've got some killer information coming up. The Jump, Pivot, and Roll podcast is brought to you in part by the Shannon Styles Allstate Insurance Agency. Just as you take that next step in life, you need to take that next step in protecting yourself, your car, your home, and your family. Reach out to Shannon at 316-773-9864 or shoot her an email at sstyles at allstate.com. Also by Simplify My Life ICT. Is your life cluttered? Do you need help with organization? Rachel Murphy can help. Check out Rachel's services online at simplifymylifeict.com or reach out to Rachel at simplifymylifeict at gmail.com. To keep up with the Jump, Pivot, and Roll podcast, make sure to follow them on their Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com forward slash jump, pivot, and roll. There you can find content, podcasts of the show, discussions with Rachel and Shannon, and more. Plus, make sure to subscribe to the podcast on any of your favorite podcasting sites. From iTunes and Spotify, Google Play to TuneIn, and right on their Podbean site at jumppivotandroll.podbean.com. And for all the exclusive content, make sure to become a VIP member on their Patreon site. Just go to patreon.com forward slash jump, pivot, and roll. And welcome back to Jump, Pivot, and Roll. I'm Shannon Stiles. And I'm Rachel Murphy. And today we are talking about self-love. And it starts with putting things in order. Before we went on break, we talked about how you have to practice prioritizing your desires. Um, and practice acceptance. Accepting things, see things as they are and not worse than they are. But I think another great tool in order to put things in order is being intentional about, about taking steps that only align with your values. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, if you can say that. 
Yeah, it, it, because so many times we just go with the flow and we forget about our values. Or and we then for- everything's out of balance. Exactly. Or we forget about the goals that we're going towards. And next thing you know, uh, those are those are gone, right? Right. Or and I- we have to start over. I've been there, done that, right? But there's nothing wrong with starting over as many times as you need to fall, but get back up. Do it until. Do it until. I love that. So one of the things that I recently discovered with self-acceptance is if I stay in bed, I don't want to get out of bed. Like if I hit the snooze alarm, I want to stay. So part of what I found is I have to get up at 5 a.m. It is my prime time. I am roaring and ready to go. And and I I have have to have her call me at 5 a.m. to get me up. She does. She does. But what we were discussing, because we've tried this at different times. We tried it at seven. Remember when Mm -hmm. we tried? Now, I think seven might have worked better for you, but it did not work for me. Well, I've been sick at day. Yeah. And Shannon um, has always kind of been my accountability partner, which I love and I appreciate. And I highly suggest have a good accountability partner. But what happened is when she fell off, for a while, I fell off because all of that was on her instead of taking the responsibility on me. And I figured out that, you know what, this is my prime time. And my self-acceptance said, I can do this on my own. And I made it a priority. I am so proud of myself because I'm going on almost two and a half months now where I've gotten up at 5 a.m., Every single morning, even if I didn't go to bed till 2 a.m., I'm up at 5 a.m. I'm doing proud my of thing. you also because what that did was it ricocheted me back. I'm glad. And, I'm really glad. And it was okay that I fell off. Absolutely. Because that's what happens, but it, it's so important to, you know, one of one of the things that I do to, to put things in order is I have the right people in my life. Right. And for this exact reason. And it's not a selfish thing because I know you're thinking, I know there are some naysayers out there right now who are doing exactly what everybody does to you. And they're thinking, oh, you're all about yourself. You're all about you getting back on track, whatever you're thinking. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. And I can tell you you're wrong and have that opinion because it's not only to help myself. I can't help Rachel If I don't get back on track, when Rachel falls off, Rachel can't help me if she doesn't have that self-love and and have other people in her life to get back on track. So it's all in the perception that you look at it, right? Well, it is. It's all in the perception. But, you know, the thing is that I figured out what my self-care, self-love priorities were and my health is very important to me because health is wealth. Yes. Health is wealth. And if you take care of yourself, you're going to have a good life. And I I don't just mean physically, guys. I don't want you to think that I'm getting wrapped up in the physical. My physical is important to me because that's who I am. But my mental and emotional is just important. When I wake up in the morning, I start with water. Why? Because that feeds my body and it gives my brain what it needs. And then I do silence. I set in gratitude. It has nothing to do with just being me. It has to do with just appreciating all the beautiful things and all the trials that are part of my life so that I can grow. And then I move to meditation and then I move to brain exercises, and then exercise. So it's not even the physical that's the most important. It's kind of low man on the totem pole. Actually, I but disagree But it's still a priority. You. I disagree with you. For you, the physical is probably number one because if you're not physically fit, then your brain doesn't work as high as your mindset isn't as good. And, and I think most of us are like that, right? Most of us, if we aren't healthy physically healthy, 
And and that's why we worry about the physical. It's not a vanity thing. I mean, when you talk about physical, yeah, people probably think, oh, you're so vain. No, my body is a temple. God has God has given me this body to take care of. Therefore, it's my duty to take care of this body. It is. It so, is. But those bodies come in different sizes and different shapes. And I just, and that's fine. I don't want our listeners Listen, to think this is all about the physical because it's not. You can be you can be a size 14 and be very physically fit. You oh, can be amazingly a size, fit. You can be size 20. I don't care what size you want to say. You can be very, very fit. Or unfit. Or unfit. I was a size exactly. 4 and I was so unhealthy. Exactly. I couldn't go it goes up both the ways. stairs without panting. And that is the God's honest truth. So when we're talking about physical, we're not talking about physical appearance as far as 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 far as a perfect size, which we all have that perfect size in our mind, right? We're talking about our physical of my body's not functioning properly. My body is not healthy. That's what we're talking about. I can't get up the stairs carrying the laundry without panting. So another thing that for me that um, self-love starts with putting things in order, I've got to put my thoughts in order. And one of my favorite books is As a Man Thinketh. I love this book um, it, by James Allen. And it, there's a statement in there, and it says, A man cannot directly choose his circumstances, but he can choose his thoughts, and so indirectly, yet surely, shape his circum- circumstances. And it's so true. If you want to put things in order, and your thoughts are all on the negative, and you're focused on everything negative, it's not going to work. It's not. It's not going to work. It's not because what we feed our bodies mentally and physically is the bodies that we have left. So one of my new mantras is I will not feed my body nor my mind trash because it deserves better. And I'm going to appreciate it because it is the greatest gift that God has given me and I only get one. I don't get to turn it in for another one. I don't, I don't get to replay this game. And so to love myself is to take time for myself, to take time for my mental health and my physical health and my emotional health. So I guess what I'm trying to say to our listeners, Shannon is, you know what? That's not selfish, that putting things in order and and knowing your priorities and taking time to read or write or paint or do yoga or exercise or hang out with your best girl. Yep. Those are all things that you have a right to and I hope you take advantage of because if you don't, you will pay a price in one of those areas of life. Yeah, and, you know, keep a good balance. Balance is everything. Keep a good balance. I have to actually block out my, you know how I shared my roles with you. I have to block out in my calendar which role I'm going to be in at what time every day, right? Now, sometimes I don't get all the roles on there, but that's okay because I make sure it's, we talked about it once before, I put those big boulders in first, right? I put God first. I put family. I put, I put, you know, helping others. I have certain boulders that I put in every time. And then I put the rocks and then I put the sand. But you've got to know what your boulders are. Yes. So that's what self-love starts with. And that's why the, the, is knowing. the priorities of your self-love are, are so important because it gives you the blueprint on how to do the rest of what you need to do. <laughs> Sorry, so it brought brought up a thought in my mind real quick. Holy cow, I got so excited over that. You did. When you said blueprint, it sent it me there. Sent you there. Tony Robbins says all the time the uh, formula for happiness is when your life conditions equal your blueprint. There you go. 
There you go. Who can argue with Tony? I know. Right I there. love his logic. But it makes sense, right? If if we know what we want, like an architect, they have a vision for this beautiful building, right? The next thing they do is they make a blueprint so that they know exactly how they're going to make that vision a reality. And then once once they have the blueprint, they start taking action right. to build it, right? right. And it's a D. Tell my detailed. husband works in this industry. It is a detailed down to every little inch. They know what has to go into it. And and things will change because you know they'll get sometimes they'll get something out and now they've got a new blueprint and this has been added or that's been taken off. But they still have the structure in place. And your structure needs to be your self care. So I guess what I can leave you with right now is the point I want to make is if you're not happy right now, if you're not completely fulfilled with your life, look at your blueprint. And if you don't have a blueprint, start there. You have to have a blueprint because otherwise your life conditions equal whatever you come upon. And if it's going to be a grouchy person, then you're going to be a, you're going to have a grouchy day, right? So start with your blueprint. And once you have that blueprint, take all the action you can possibly take to make that blueprint a reality. And that's where you're going to find true happiness. Yeah. So here's my challenge to our listeners, Shannon, because you know, I love these challenges, right? If you're not taking time for self-care, I want you to write one thing, one area. I don't care what it is. Whatever is like the thing that's just calling out to your heart or your soul right now. Calgon, take me away. Calgon, that that bubble bath or whatever. And I want you to write it on your bathroom mirror. Today, I will blank. Take 10 minutes to read a book. I will give myself a facial once a week. I will start waking up. 30 minutes early so I can take a walk or sit outside and enjoy watching the sunrise come up. I will go and spend one afternoon a month with my girlfriend for two hours so that I can just recharge. I will kiss my husband every time he comes in for the next week to see if that doesn't spice things up. Whatever it is, one thing, you can write more. But please, please write down one thing that you're going to do that makes your self-care a priority. And then do it. And when you write it down, use a dry erase marker because it comes off real easily. It's or nice to see. <laughs> Lipstick's going to be a little harder to get off. But but the point is, you know, if you want to write more than one, write more than one. But I recommend you just start with one. Yeah, don't overwhelm yourself. Just don't do more one. than three. If you have to do more than one, don't do more than three because you can do that the first week and then the next week, add another one and add another one and add another one. And before you know it, you will be living a more intentional, self-fulfilling, self-caring, being able to give to more people life and that's our whole goal for ourselves and for you you know life doesn't always come with directions sometimes you've got to jump pivot and roll thank you so much for listening to the podcast if it's your first time please go out and follow us uh subscribe to the podcast like and share this out because you don't know whose life you could change forever and leave us your one we would love to see that on the facebook page and we have just created a group as well so we'll be doing some fun things in there soon so look for that have a great day 